Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 130. How wondrous is thy mercy, Lord! How faithful is thy kindness! Thou gavest the treasure of thy word. That word dispels all blindness. Thou holdest all things in thy sight, for in thy presence is no night, and in thy light shall we see light. Hymn number 130. Scriptural will be given by Dale W. from Virginia. Matthew, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Psalms. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. 
Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 245. O tender, loving shepherd, we long to follow thee, to follow where thou leadest, though rough the path may be. Though dark and heavy shadows enshroud the way with gloom, we know that love will guide us and safely lead us home. Hymn number 245.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we, we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can also find us on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school that meets at 11 a.m. every Sunday. And that's available for children anywhere in the world because it has its own teleconference number. So if you have a child of Sunday school age, and if you don't live in the area, please call us and we'll give you the number and would love to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers at all of our services. And let's see, we are going to have another Bible study session this coming Saturday, November 7. So check the website for study questions and please join us Saturday morning, 10 a.m., November 7. You'll be glad you did. And we've been printing and mailing again this week. The most recent issue of Forum Highlights has been printed and mailed to subscribers. And we have over 20 different websites, many in different foreign languages, all filled with articles, songs, readings, services that will uplift and bless those who log on and listen. And we have a really fine, short but very fine article on our English website entitled Fear by Mary Baker Eddy. How to handle fear and what it really is. Excellent article. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. Now we're going to have the reading of a testimony from miscellaneous writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Carol from California. Good morning. Page Roman numeral XII, chapter 12, page 456. This is the first uh, testimony paragraph that's complete. I would inform my friends and the public that after 12 years of sickness, I am restored to health. And with renewed vigor and keen enjoyment, take up the pleasures and duties of life once more. All labor now seems less arduous and all happiness more perfect. True Christian science has taught in science and health with key to the scriptures. I am indebted for my restoration. I can cordially recommend this book to all. By Rose A. Wigglesworth, Lowell, Massachusetts. Thank you. Happy Sunday. Okay, the lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 10 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Everlasting Punishment. The golden text is from 1 Chronicles. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. The responsive reading is from Psalms. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Florence will now read. From the Bible, Psalms. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me truly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Jonah Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. So Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So they took up Jonah, and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. I will pay that, that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. And Jonah began to enter into the cities a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Isaiah how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, 
that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, mm. that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord had made there his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Matthew Jesus came Luke And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, what man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he has found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, and saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Psalm. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Farley from Maryland will now read. Science and Health. The way to escape the misery of sin is to cease sinning. There is no other way. Sorrow for wrongdoing is but one step toward reform and the very easiest step. The next and great step required by wisdom is the test of our sincerity, namely reformation. To this end, we are placed under the stress of circumstances. Temptation bids us repeat the offense, and woe comes in return for what is done. So it will ever be till we learn that there is no discount in the law of justice and that we must pay the uttermost farthing. The measure ye meet shall be measured to you again, and it will be full and running over. 
Saints and sinners get their full award, but not always in this world. The followers of Christ drank his cup. Ingratitude and persecution filled it to the brim. But God pours the riches of his love into the understanding and affections, giving us strength according to our day. Sinners flourish like a green bay tree. But looking farther, the psalmist could see their end. The destruction of sin through suffering. An apostle says that the Son of God, Christ, came to destroy the works of the devil. We should follow our divine exemplar and seek the destruction of all evil works, error and disease included. We cannot escape the penalty due for sin. The scriptures say that if we deny Christ, he also will deny us. Divine love corrects and governs man. Men may pardon, but this divine principle alone reforms the sinner. God is not separate from the wisdom he bestows. The talents he gives we must improve. Calling on him to forgive our work badly done or left undone implies the vain supposition that we have nothing to do but to ask pardon and that afterwards we shall be free to repeat the offense. To cause suffering as a result of sin is the means of destroying sin. Every supposed pleasure in sin will furnish more than its equivalent of pain. Until belief in material life and sin is destroyed. To reach heaven, the harmony of being, we must understand the divine principle of being. Work out your own salvation is the demand of life and love. For to this end, God worketh with you. Occupy till I come. Wait for your reward and be not weary in well-doing. If your endeavors are beset by fearful odds and you receive no present reward, go not back to error nor become a sluggard in the race. When the smoke of battle clears away, you will discern the good you have done and receive according to your deserving. Love is not hasty to deliver us from temptation, for love means that we shall be tried and purified. Justice requires reformation of the sinner. Mercy cancels the debt only when justice approves. Revenge is inadmissible. Wrath, which is only appeased, is not destroyed but partially indulged. Wisdom and love may require many sacrifices of self to save us from sin. One sacrifice, however great, is insufficient to pay the debt of sin. Lust, malice, and all sorts of evil are diseased beliefs, and you can destroy them only by destroying the wicked motives which produce them. If the evil is over in the repentant mortal mind, while its effects still remain on the individual, you can remove this disorder as God's law is fulfilled, and reformation cancels the crime. The healthy sinner is the hardened sinner. This conviction that there is no real pleasure in sin is one of the most important points in the theology of Christian science. Arouse the sinner to this new and true view of sin. Show him that sin confers no pleasure. And this knowledge strengthens his moral courage and increases his ability to master evil and to love good. Healing the sick and reforming the sinner are one and the same thing in Christian science. 
Both cures require the same method and are inseparable in truth. Hatred, envy, dishonesty, fear, and so forth make a man sick. And neither material medicine nor mind can help him permanently, even in body, unless it makes him better mentally and so delivers him from his destroyers. The basic error is mortal mind. Hatred inflames the brutal propensities. The indulgence of evil motives and aims makes any man who is above the lowest type of manhood a hopeless sufferer. Christian science commands man to master the propensities, to hold hatred in abeyance with kindness, to conquer lust with chastity, revenge with charity, and to overcome deceit with honesty. Choke these errors in their early stages if you would not cherish an army of conspirators against health, happiness, and success. They will deliver you to the judge, the arbiter of truth against error. The judge will deliver you to justice, and the sentence of the moral law will be executed upon mortal mind and body. Both will be manacled until the last farthing is paid, until you have balanced your account with God. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The good man finally can overcome his fear of sin. This is sin's necessity to destroy itself. Immortal man demonstrates the government of God good, in which is no power to sin. The destruction of sin is the divine method of pardon. Divine life destroys death. Truth destroys error. And love destroys hate. Being destroyed, sin needs no other form of forgiveness. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 172. Lift up thy light, O man, arise and shine steadfast, while loud the storms of life assail. 
immortal ray of that great light divine, against whose all power no tempest can prevail. Hymn number 172. If we 
Word of life, most pure, most strong, lo, for thee the nations long. Spread till from its dreary night all the world awakes to light. Hymn number 394. read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, 
and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Amen. Amen.